All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick little review refresher for you on some of the things that we learned. The first thing we learned was a central angle. Now, Robert, the main important thing about a central angle was a central angle had a vertex at the center. All right? And it had two endpoints that were on the circle AB, and that would be our angle 1. Now, when we're talking about the central angle, the central angle, the measurement of our angle, measure of angle 1, was equal to the measure of the arc. All right? So if I say this is 60 degrees, then the arc is 60 degrees. It's the same. The next thing we learned the next day was what we call an inscribed angle. And an inscribed angle didn't have the vertex at the center, but it had the vertex on a point of the circle. So now, if you have a vertex on the point of the circle, this is what we went over last class period, then to find the measure of angle 1, it wasn't what the arc of AB was. It was half the arc of AB. So the measure of angle 1 is equal to 1 half the measure of arc AB. So it depends on where your vertex is at. If your vertex is in the center, then the arc is the same. If your vertex is on the circle, then it's 1 half of the arc. So therefore, if I say this angle, if I say 30 degrees is 60, then the arc measurement is? OK. If this is 60, that's 60. If this is 60, that's going to be 120, because this angle is 1 half of what that arc is. All right. So if that's 60, the arc measure is 120. So now let's look at the last one. And this is going to be created when we have two chords or secant lines going through that are going to create a point that is outside or I'm sorry, inside the circle, but not on the circle or not in the center. So we'll call measure of angle one, we'll say A, B, C, D. All right? So if I ask you what is the measure of angle one, our formula is the measure of angle one is equal to the sum times 1 half of measure of arc AB plus the measure of arc CD. Robert, I wouldn't be concerned about that right now. I would just be concerned about if I'm trying to find angle 1, what I need to now do is take 1 half of the sum of AB as well as the opposite arc. All right. So again, to reiterate, central angle. You find the arc of their central angle. For inscribed angle, it's 1 half of your arc. And for the third angle, it's going to be 1 half the sum of its arc and of its opposite arc. Okay. Almost, almost.